Hi there and welcome back to another episode. So today we'll be looking at black holes and wormholes. So I'll quickly start off by explaining how a black hole is configured. So a black hole is basically made of three major areas. Uh, the first being the accretion disk, which is a large circumference around the black hole on the outer edge. It's mainly full of dust and gas particles that are lying around in space. Uh, secondly, you have the event horizon, which is the area in the black hole where light has been captured and is circulating around and around the black hole. And uh, lastly, you have the point of singularity, which is the point where the gravity in the black hole is so intense that it's squashed space-time into an infinitesimally small point. So if you were a space traveller travelling to a black hole, what you would feel was a acceleration upon your body as you came closer and closer to the black hole. But if, if you were an observer watching someone enter a black hole, what would happen is you would see them approach it and they will gradually slow down and slow down and slow down until they reach the event horizon, at which point it would appear as if they have stopped completely. Yet for that person who is travelling to the centre of the black hole, they're still going off, they're still moving, yet you cannot see anything beyond the event horizon, therefore this person will appear as if they have stopped. Uh, this effect is called di uh, time dilation. Any object in the universe is capable of becoming a black hole. Um, it's to do with the radius and the density of the actual object. The radius at which a certain object will become a black hole is due to the Schwarzschild radius which has the equation as follows. This equation is very important in dealing with wormholes and the first solution of the wormhole comes from the Einstein-Rosen bridge equation which is this. And the Einstein-Rosen bridge solution to the wormhole is a weird solution as it's a wormhole that instantaneously appears and then disappears. It only lives for a fraction of a moment. What's amazing about this is the solution. It basically says that at the end of a black hole, when it instantaneously connects to another black hole at the end, it's connecting to another whole universe. And if this was accessible, th the implication is that there is no return. You will not be able to come back to your own universe. You are stuck in this parallel world. And lastly, we have the Kip Thorne solution to the wormhole. And this wormhole is much more interesting, as this solution allows it to be transversible, so you can return to back to your original position once you've gone through the wormhole. The equation for the Kip Thorne solution is as follows. And this wormhole solution has a high likelihood of actually being able to be created. The tools that would be needed is far beyond anything we are capable of at the moment. But if you could harness the mass energy equivalent of a massive star and you distorted that into a black hole, that black hole would be unstable. So what you would need is, you would need the mass energy equivalent of the planet Jupiter. And the planet Jupiter being the largest planet in our solar system, obviously has a large, large mass. However, you would not need the positive amount, the standard amount, you would need the negative energy equivalent of the mass of Jupiter to keep open a one meter radius ring for the Kip Thorne wormhole. And that's a crazy amount of negative energy. It's 1.71 times 10 to the 44 joules. So that's 1.71 with 44 zeros after it of joules. And that's in negative energy amounts. So we've come to the end of another episode and I would like to say thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and check out these other two links here I've put on the page and I'll hope again to see you soon. Thank you.